Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. Today we are at BT Sustainable Festival at Adastro Park. And now I'm delighted to be joined by Sarwar Khan, who is the Global Head of Sustainability for BT Business. So first, can you tell us a bit about the announcement you just made with Johnson Controls? Yes, absolutely. So um, as part of getting to net zero for a lot of our uh, business customers, they need to look at how they reduce their emissions end to end. And a core part of that is what we refer to as scope one and two emissions. Um, scope one and two typically made up of uh, operations. Um, so that can include everything from buildings to fleets to on-site energy. Um, but a lot of organizations, um, they're struggling to understand and deploy technology at scale to decarbonize their operations. Um, and many of them say what's holding them back is the, the security concerns, there's complexity associated with connecting these type of operations, um, and um, they don't really know where to get started. So um, this collaboration with Johnson Controls is aimed at simplifying um, the digitalization of buildings, uh, connecting them to the Open Blue platform, which is provided by Johnson Controls, to help customers digitally measure analyze and optimize their built estate and that's a key component in terms of helping customers to reduce the emission of their operations across their built, built, built environment. What are some other examples of products and solutions that you are exploring or deploying uh, for sustainability for your customers? Yeah absolutely and, and we talked about uh, three pillars for us really in terms of where, our, where we will be focusing on sustainability for our business customers. Um, the first one is measure and helping customers um, understand the impact of the products and services that they're buying from BT. So typically some of the solutions that we've launched for our customers available and accessible to them today include things like the digital carbon calculator and the carbon network dashboard. Uh, the second pillar which is around connect, this is about making things um, smarter to make them greener. If you can't connect your assets, it's very difficult to decarbonize. So in that instance, um, we're looking for opportunities very similar to what we've done with Johnson Controls to help customers optimize energy usage and decarbonize across their broader operations. Uh, and then the final area is, um, is on um, the uh, scale piece. So we've talked a lot about AI and the increase in compute power required to, to deal with all of the AI and you know there's a there's a potential of uh, energy usage increase and uh, an increase in carbon emissions as well so um, what we want to do is ensure that um, the networks are as efficient as possible they power through 100% renewable electricity but we're also providing the data back in terms of energy usage across the digital infrastructure so our customers actually understand the way they're running the workloads and applications, is that as sustainable as possible? Um, so that's something specific to the carbon network dashboard. So they're just some examples, but look, it's, it's a very new area, it's emerging. Lots of organizations have just set their targets. We know that technology is gonna be critical in them achieving their net zero targets, and there's gonna be plenty of other opportunities for solutions and, and collaboration. And what do you see as the main requests that you get from customers when it comes to sustainability? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, typically, um, and I'd say very broadly actually, and just in terms of the different customer requests we get, is pretty much centered around three things. Um, so the first, first one is um, credentials. Are, are we aligned as a partner, as a supplier uh, on net zero? So what are, what are BT's net zero? So BT's ambitions, are they science-based? Um, do we report into CDP? Uh, what's our e um, EcoVardis score? Um, so that's becoming really common. Um, so credentials is one piece. Uh, the second piece is, uh, coming back to my point around measure, um, lots of customers as they're trying to figure out the baseline in terms of where they are on their net zero journey, they need data. So many of them are starting to ask uh, BT, what's the carbon footprint associated with my products and services for what I'm taking from, from you? Um, and then the final one, which is really interesting and I'm starting to see an upwards trend, is um, uh, low carbon products and services. So um, here's what we typically offer you as part of the network design, um, costed, uh, but a lot of our customers now want to know what's the sustainability impact of that. Could they potentially uh, tweak the design in a certain way to optimize that? 
example, low carbon operations. So they really want to understand what is the sustainability features associated with the different products and services that they're buying. And have your clients um, changed their demands recently? Have the, have the demands changed in the last few years? Uh, over the last few years, absolutely. And um, there's a couple of drivers. Uh, the first one is the increase in the number of organizations who have set a science-based net zero target. I think that's exponentially increased over the last couple of years. Uh, and the second piece um, is regulation. So um, there's a host of regulations, regardless of where you're operating in the world when it now comes to sustainability um, and auditability when it comes to, to net zero as well. But ultimately what a lot of our customers are looking for is transparency. And hence those three broad asks, it's all about transparency. And speaking of transparency, have you made calculations? Have you estimated how much savings can you bring in terms of financial savings um, and also carbon dioxide footprint from sustainable products? Um, so specifically for um, the network products and services that we supply, um, our carbon network dashboard, um, it has the ability to actually extract the real-time power information directly from uh, devices and also servers. Um, it then correlates that uh, based on energy usage, depending on what region you are. Uh, and then we can associate a cost with that. Um, and based on our recommendations in terms of how you may want to optimize your network to be a lot more sustainable. So that could be powering off your access points or um, your local area network in out of business hours. We do provide an estimated saving back to the customer and that goes alongside energy savings, estimated energy savings and estimated carbon savings as well. And lastly, because we're at BT Sustainability Festival, what is your favorite demonstration when it comes to sustainability? I mean, there's a lot of great demos here today and um, it's a real pleasure to be surrounded by our partners and customers who are bringing innovation um, to the forefront here. And, and, and it's, a, it's completely different in terms of just talking about it and actually seeing it um, in action. My favorite one so far has probably been uh, the DHL truck actually, fully powered through um, electricity um, and I haven't seen that before and I think that's that's a huge step in terms of um, innovating for sustainable transport so that was really really cool but there's plenty of others I'll be honest I haven't made my way around everything and um, so I'm really looking forward to see what others um, have got there as well. And do you see a lot of customer interest into events like this? Um, well, if we go by the numbers today, you know, we've, uh, I think in total, as of uh, a couple of days ago, we had uh, probably close to 2,000 registrations, a um, combination of our partners, uh, but predom predominantly our customers as well. So we've got a, a huge footprint today, physically, as you can see, and the bulk of the people attending today are actually our customers. So. Um, I would say, yes, it seems to be like there is an increase in demand, but um, Baz called out today at the beginning of, uh, uh, of his keynote, when he opened the festival, he said, um, we need to move to a position of action. And what we're hoping for from um, our event here today is that customers are inspired, uh, but they have those difficult conversations, either with us or with our partners, and they actually take something away and, and implement something within their organization. Sarah, thank you very much for speaking with us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.